It has been a very big week in Indiana fever. Very big month, very big year ahead. Lynn Dunn, who is at the center of it all, here to talk. Locked on women's basketball starts now. Ogumba Wallet for the win. You are locked on women's basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to Lockdown Women's Basketball. I'm your host, Howard Megdahl, thanking you for making us your first listen every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. We are five days a week on the Women's Basketball writ large, and Saturdays are always about the WNBA draft, uh, which <laughs> there's a lot of Indiana Fever conversation about that. Of course, uh, our good friends uh, throughout the next hoops.com are the ones who are bringing you that coverage. Tony East does wonderful work on the fever. We cover over a hundred reported pieces every month across the women's basketball landscape. We're $9 a month, $72 a year. The next hoops.com really important to subscribe and support independent coverage of women's basketball. And I dare say a larger than average share of those stories have been driven by about and involving Lynn Dunn and the many things she is doing to transform the Indiana fever. Lynn, it is always delightful to chat with you. I'm wondering whether you have gotten a chance to take a breath since what has been a really epic few weeks here for you. I'm taking a breath today. Today's my take a, take a breath day, relax. Uh, reflect on what's happened uh, over the last uh, weeks, months. Um, you know, we've achieved so much recently. And by the way, Howard, thank you for everything you do. You know, uh, you're, you're just a huge, you just have a huge impact on promoting our sport. And I can't ever say thank you enough. So that's why I'm saying thank you again. Uh, but, you know, we've accomplished a lot in a short period of time. We now have a coach. We now have our first draft pick. And so we're ready to refocus on the next steps. So let's talk about each in turn. And so for, I assume our listeners who are not living under a rock know this, but just to kind of get them up to speed, uh, the number one pick belongs to the Indiana Fever in this draft. It is by no means the only pick. And we are talking to somebody who figured out how to get surplus value last year at two, four, six, 10, and 20. So we're going to get into that a little bit. And the great Christie Sides is the next head coach of the Indiana fever, which is a pick. And we talked to Christy on the program last week, but just to reiterate with what I said there, you know, a longtime assistant, somebody who understands how this sport works from the inside out. So I want to take each in turn and let's start with Christy. Lynn, I know that you talked about a process that was going to last a month and ended up lasting more like two plus in part because it was so important, as you said, to get this right. And you talked about this in the press conference. Take me through, though, what were your kind of benchmarks for getting it right and how you knew how you were able to kind of settle on Christie and what was a really robust process for you? Well, first, it took. It did take longer than I expected, and I think what what kind of threw my schedule off was uh, the FIBA World Cup that took place in Australia. Not only were, did I have some candidates over there, I had some folks over there that were references for candidates, and so it, it just right. took more time um, with that event going on. And a, a congratulations again to the USA and Cheryl and Kurt and everybody that was part of that. Um, event you know once again we came home with the gold medal so my process was very deliberate it was very specific I knew I wanted first and foremost someone with extensive WNBA experience whether it was head or assistant they knew the league they knew the players they had been fully invested um, in the WNBA and so Christy was initially right at the top of my list because when I looked at her resume and saw um, historically, um, what she had done in the WNBA and what she'd done internationally. I, I had really had kind of forgotten about her uh, experience in Russia. Mm-hmm. The players, the, the, the elite players 
that she had coached over there uh, with champ to, to championships. Um, and so I, I was also interested in someone that, that had high energy. You know, these, these young players, we have a young team. There's not any doubt about that. They need someone that has a 24 uh, seven energy, you know, the energizer bunny that can just go with them and, and, and just keep up with their energy. And they're, they're just, you know, I knew it had to be someone like that. Um, and, and then I also knew it had to be someone that really um, w- was all in with relationships, mm-hmm. you know, that, that, that put the players first. That, this is a, that, this league exists because we have these elite players. It doesn't exist because we have coaches. Right. So we have to do everything within our power to connect with these players find out what they need, find out how to motivate them, and build solid, sound, long-lasting relationships. And so that was a real plus, uh, I I thought, of Christy. And then, of course, I wanted someone that valued defense. And so when you start adding up all of these um, pieces that matter to me, uh, you can see how Christy kept rising to the top. Um, and, and then, and then, you know, when she's got two mentors like Van Chancellor and Leon Barmore, I'm like, wow, this is really, re- really coming together here. And so, um, I decided to take my time, be thorough. Uh, and at the end of the day, um, I, I just thought we hit a home run. You know, when, when I offered the job to Christy, and I and and she accepted it, and and man, she's hit the ground running. Mm-hmm. Uh, her energy, her her just attention to detail. Um, the players were excited. They immediately had had uh, great positive responses from their talks with her. She called everybody all over the world um, and had conversations with all of our players. Um, so, um, you know, it's been a week since we had our press conference, and um, and we're all go. And you know, we've had this wonderful. On top of the press conference, uh, lottery draft win, you know, so it was a win-win. Last Friday was a win-win day. It's a day that I believe we'll look back on as one of the pivotal moments in the history of the Fever, but possibly in the history of this league, too. And and, and I want to get to that lottery and, and, and to what that experience was like. But, you know, in terms of Christy, in particular, the thing I go back to when I look at on her resume is, um, you know, first of all, the thing she said to you flat out um, saying, you know, if you guys had defended better, you'd have won five more games last year, which is an interesting point to make. But also just, you know, this as well as anyone from your head coach and experience too. there are certain coaches who bring the talent level up on the defensive end is she talked about that it's emphasis it's points of emphasis that allow you to do it is is that where you think the greatest area of growth is on the defensive end for you guys or is part of it what kind of team you're giving her and is personnel going to play a part in figuring out a way to bridge that gap between how you defend it and how you want to defend in 2023 i think it's both howard i think it's both um I, 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 of course, have always been a defensive coach, defense first. You know, uh, on those nights when those shots aren't falling, uh, you know, that tough defense keeps you in the game, keeps you close, and then you still game at the end. Um, it's attention to detail, and, and that's one of the things that I think Christy gets. She understands that you have to teach the basic fundamentals of defense, and then you have to demand them. There has to be repetition, and then they become habits. And then – lo and behold, that defense uh, becomes an identity. And that's, you know, a lot of people think we won that championship in 2012 because we outscored Minnesota. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's not how we beat Minnesota. We beat Minnesota because in the championship game, Simone Augustus scored two points. That's how we won that championship. And so um, we will reestablish a defensive identity. And I will provide her through the draft, through free agency, through trades, with the type people, the type talent that understand that, you know, that will play tough, you know, physical, I guess I like the word nasty defense, you know, um, take no prisoners, uh, that, that, that understand that defense wins basketball games, you know what I'm saying, we're, we're, wins championships. And mm-hmm. so 
it's a combination of the coach valuing it. The coach is a great teacher of the fundamentals of individual and team defense. And then we've got the people, the players that are all in. And so it's, it's going to be a, a, a package there for how we build our defensive identity. Going to be fascinating to see. Yeah, no, I told my eight-year-old who's playing basketball for the first time and as sweet as can be, you know, that, you, you know, and take that sweetness and have it on the sideline and on the, you know, I, after the game and before the game, when you're out there, you're a killer. Nasty is just the right way to put it. So I, I, I agree with you. I think that makes a lot of sense. And so I want to get into some of that personnel, but I do first want to tell you about BetterHelp and this show and episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's important that you know that the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp, has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. It's affordable as well. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOnNBA. So in terms of the personnel, and I, I mean, you've been around this league a couple of years now, right? There, there's, there are some drafts where you say, all right, there's a few different potential options at number one. And there's a few times where you come into the lottery and it's like, all right, this is going to be for such and such player. And I say, you know, I remember sitting uh, in ESPN studios uh, waiting and hearing that in 2016, the Seattle storm had won the lottery and it was the Brianna Stewart lottery. And so Dan Hughes talked about the fact that, you know, geez, we're real disappointed in San Antonio. I, you know, of course, ironically, Dan Hughes eventually gets to coach her and the world changes that way. Do you see that as the case in 2023? I, I mean, without mincing words, that this was a lottery for Aaliyah Boston in some critical ways. I think everyone has assumed, um, and maybe rightfully so, we'll see that, that Aaliyah Boston is the number one uh, selection. She certainly uh, led her team to a championship last year. She's shown enormous improvement. Uh, Dawn has done a fantastic job working with her. Dawn and, and Lisa and Joe Led and Fred, uh, Fred you know, they, they're great coaches. And it's been interesting to watch Aaliyah grow every year. Um, and let's don't forget now she could grow an extra year, you know, we, but let's don't lose sight of that. And, and, and to be honest with you, if, if I was Dawn Staley, I would not let her get away. If, I could, <laughs> if there was any possible way, yeah, you know, I would talk her into leaving South Carolina with a PhD in order to, because she's that good. And then we saw how well she did uh, with the USA trials, um, you know, being part of the national team um, tryout camp. Um, and so I think she is definitely um, set herself up uh, to be the potential first round draft pick. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there are some other players. Of course, everyone is, is talking about Haley Jones at Stanford. And, I, you know, I'm a big Stanford fan. Um, we're thrilled with Lexi Hull. You know, one of the reasons I took Lexi, not only could she score, but she defends. She yeah. is a defender and she uses that length. And so she's my kind of player. Uh, and then I'm, I'm very intrigued with Diamond Miller uh, at Maryland. Uh, her athleticism, her length, her potential as a pro, um, those three right off the bat uh, come to my mind as potential first-round draft picks. And then let's don't forget, I've already had, and I, this is sharing it for the first time right here on uh, Locked on Women's Basketball, uh, I've already had two teams reach out to me about trading the first pick. Yep. So um, that's intriguing because, wow, what could I get, um, you know, two for one, three for one, future draft pick? Wow. Uh, I knew that first pick had value, but I'm starting to realize it has tremendous value, especially for a team, a franchise like ours, that we're in the rebuild process. Mm -hmm. This first draft pick could help us skip maybe a step or two that I didn't know we could. So it's an exciting time for us. 
It is, no doubt. And and listen, Aaliyah Boston, the level of play you can expect from her in year one, I'm sure goes into that evaluation. The fact that she's going to be on a rookie contract plays a part too, you know, given how onerous the salary cap is. Um, but I, I also, it's hard not to go back to uh, the history of Christie Sides. And this is somebody who, uh, you know, we're coaching with Pokey, had the opportunity uh, to build around uh, a center at LSU, um, kind of obscure. I don't know that people know the name anymore, named Sylvia Fowles. And uh, I don't know what ever happened to her. She might have uh, <laughs> gone on to a pretty good pro career. But, you know, there is kind of a, uh, I guess, a, an imprint there that you can kind of replicate. I, I, is that part of the appeal as well for when you think about Aaliyah? Well, part of the appeal for Christy is the fact that she's coached these elite players. She not only coached uh, Sylvia at LSU, but let's remember Sylvia was, was in Chicago with them. Right. And so um, Christy has a background uh, around the elite post players in the world. She also coached mm -hmm. Sylvia uh, in Russia. That's right. So, um, I will rely a lot on uh, on Christy's background with with the, with what she's done with the bigs, mm -hmm. uh, and so I think that's another positive, another check mark for 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 why Christy uh, is a, the perfect fit for this young team. Um, uh, does Leah Boston have the potential to be another Sylvia Falls? Absolutely, not any that uh, Sylvia Falls. I said Falls, Sylvia Falls. Absolutely, um, she has you know, all the tools to do that. Um, and, and Sylvia, it will go down um, in history as, as one of our greatest sinners ever, you know, but I guess the debates between her and Lisa Leslie, you know, who, who was the greatest sinner that so far that's ever played in the WNBA? I'm, I'm hard pressed. If you had to, I'm so curious about this and it's sort of off topic, but I think it's still, um, I think when you measure everything, when you look at career value, the fact that, you know, Syl was so great, deep into her thirties, right to the end, you know, was that level of player. Uh, I give her sort of that slight edge. What do you think if you had to pick one? Ouch. Ouch. It'd be <laughs> tough. You know, it, uh, it'd be tough, you know, because Lisa did so much to establish this league in the, in the early stages. Um, but I do think as the league has grown, you know, as the talent has gotten better, you know, just like it's hard to it's hard to compare our current, you know, Olympic team with that '92 Dream Team. You know, what I'm saying like they're the '92 Dream Team with Michael and all them. They're convinced they could still beat the the players of the day. It, it, it's hard to it's hard to compare the two. Um, so I'm just gonna say it's a tie. That's fair. That's both diplomatic and fair. <laughs> that that well, that's what I loved about Sue Bird's career was you could compare early WNBA to current WNBA because she was in both. So that's, that was always a useful thing from a writing perspective. Uh, but I, I do want to talk about just the fact that, you know, again, Lexi, you could argue of the five players got the least opportunity effectively, you know, because of her injuries. Um, but there were signs that she's somebody who's going to be able to play in this league. I am a believer in that too. Uh, you had contributions out of all five players. You have, several draft pitch coming in this year. The question is more, where is that balance to strike as you are building? And we've talked about this, you know, as a multi-year arc, is this the time to try and consolidate with more veteran presences? Uh, you know, do you have in your mind, you know, in order to build culture, you need uh, this amount of young players, but not more than this amount of young players. How, how do you build that just in terms of experience in this league? Mm -hmm. I, I think, Howard, the, the word I would use would be recipe for success. And I think part of our recipe, of course, is talent. You know, we have to get quality talent. Uh, but we also have to build a culture. Uh, and I think as we build that culture, uh, we do need uh, and we will be aggressive in free agency. We will look to, uh, to build some needs that we have. Um, with a with some not not forty year olds, but we want there's a there's an age limit in there that they've had enough experience in this league uh, to be to be a, a pro role model, and mm -hmm. we we will look there. We will look there, and so that we will can add that veteran 
free agent with this young talent and start to blend it together. Um, and then, then l these draft picks that we have uh, coming up, you know, they're, they're, they're available to be traded too. And, and that's another, I've got another team that's uh, draft pick poor. And you could probably guess who those teams are that have little or no draft picks. Yes. So they're after some of our draft picks. So we, we're in a real unique situation where we have some flexibility um, with our salary cap, uh, with our draft picks, uh, with our young players. You, you know, right off the bat, everybody's wondering, okay, if you add Aaliyah Boston, how does that fit with Queen and Lissa and Emily? Uh, that's a that's a good problem. It is. It is. Error. That's a wonderful problem. You know, how do we make all that good young talent work together? Um, so it, it's an interesting dynamic, but we do know – uh, it would be nice to have a 25, 26, 27 year old uh, free agent um, that can come in and, and and really give us some more leadership. I think. And and you have that luxury too of having that player in place signed long term in Kelsey Mitchell. I know, and you know we could relitigate to the end of the day, the idea that she wasn't an all-star last year, which just made no sense to me at the time and made even less sense to me in, in hindsight. But I, but I wonder when you look at what Kelsey Mitchell can be, she became, I know, more vocal last year. This is something that she's taken more responsibility for. Is that something where even there's a next step where you're thinking in terms of, you know, not just her presence on the floor, which has its own obvious benefits, but what she can be in that locker room too? I think so, Howard. I think we've seen Kelsey grow. You know, we all have a personality style. And, you know, and she's, she's quiet, she's laid back. Um, you know, she's not that rah-rah kind of a player. You know, yeah. she, she's soft-spoken. And I think she's had to work um, <clears throat> at that whole area uh, of being the voice of a team. Mm -hmm. And in progress, um, the great thing about Kelsey is she wants to win. And she has invested an enormous amount of time in her game. She is a relentless worker. Um, in some aspects, she reminds me of uh, Tamika Catchings in that we have to lock the gym and turn off the lights to, to get, make them get rest, yeah. which that's another good problem. Um, so we don't have to worry about her work. Uh, what, what we need now is for her to continue to find her voice, her continue, her to continue to assert herself, uh, and take more ownership in the leadership area with this, uh, with this team. And it would, it would help her to have some help around her, you know, right. Teams have two or three strong leaders mm -hmm. that, that lead. And so Kelsey could use some help. Yeah, no no question about it. I, I know you're on the case. Um, I will also say that LinkedIn is on the case, another one of our sponsors. Every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. Uh, no different than if you have the number one overall draft pick. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available I can tell you, I use LinkedIn jobs to help me find writers who cover this lead with the fierce urgency that we need to over at the next. It's important as you head into the end of the year that you use LinkedIn jobs and you can post your job for free over there at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. That is linkedin.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. I guess you're not going to need to post that number one pick. I guess people know about it. It is interesting to me that you've ruled out. You said no 40-year-olds. So I guess you're saying you're not going to pull Sue Bird out of retirement to come to the country. I already tried that. I tried to talk to her about coaching. I tried to talk to her about playing another year. All through. Going in a different direction. You know, she's got her soccer team she's invested in in, in New York. And I'm telling what she's got going on in uh, – in Seattle, but, you know, I wish her the best. Uh, you know, this is her next chapter of her life. It, it, it's true. It, it's I'm I'm still getting my mind around it as well. But uh, certainly the fact that she'll be talking soccer here in our market. I'm, I'm out in New Jersey. Uh, that's OK. That's just that's going to be a very different set of Sue Bird interviews for us on the media side, for sure. Uh, Lynn, before I let you go, just in terms of your day to day, uh, 
you know, again, as we talked about, you have a lot of draft picks. Uh, how much basketball are you watching every day? How do you kind of drink from the fire hose that is trying to stay on top of all of the action that's going on, um, seeing it live, you know, just take me through what that process is like for you. Well, this is the period of time where I'm, I'm really focused in on uh, the top seven draft picks. As you know, we have one, seven, and 13. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm focused on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I'm watching the games. I watched three games last night. Um, I'm watching the games of the players that I think could fall in, in that slot right now on TV. Mm -hmm. and, and then by the 1st of January, I will really have my, say, top 13, since we have the 13th pick, 1 through 13, mm -hmm. 1, 7, 13. And then we'll go out, uh, Christy and I, and then we'll have some, some assistance on board right. uh, by January. And then we will start to watch these players in person watch them practice, you know, a real good way to learn about these players is go a day or two early, watch their practices, talk to all the people that they interact with, watch the game, talk to the coaches, uh, make sure you've gathered all your information uh, about these uh, prospects uh, that you're interested in. But that'll all happen in January and February, really close. Yeah. While we're also uh, getting in the middle of free agency, Mm -hmm. So we're starting to prepare for free agency, what direction we're going to go, how we're going to go, what we can do. Uh, a lot of these players, a lot of free agents didn't go overseas. It's been real interesting uh, to see um, how many WNBA players chose this year not to go overseas. I find that very interesting. I do, too. Prioritization is obviously playing a part in that, but there's a whole lot of people who are making even medium term and long term plans around careers that are different in that way. So, yeah, it will be fascinating to see. And obviously looking forward to our paths crossing uh, as you zero in on those players as well. But Lyndon, delightful to chat with you. Uh, congratulations on all that's been happening. And uh, I know for our listeners, uh, thank you for making us your first listen every day. Make sure now you are listening as well to Locked On Sports Today. It's your second listen. It is from the games that matter to the biggest stories in sports. Go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Available on this app, YouTube, wherever you get podcasts. I'm going to send you guys over to the nexthoops.com now to read all about it. And Lynn, thank you for your time. To our listeners, we'll be back tomorrow. We're here every day. This is what we do, and we love it. I'm Howard McDowell wishing you a wonderful day. Ogumba Wallet for the win. You are locked on women's basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. 